Hello everyone, I'm Lin Dong Chao. In this course, we'll discuss passive components in WDM systems. In WDM systems, active components are components that emit light, amplify optical signals, or perform optical electrical conversions. Examples include optical amplifiers and lasers. Conversely, components that don't emit light, amplify optical signals, or perform optical electrical conversions are called passive components and include multiplexers, demultiplexers, optical couplers, splitters, attenuators, and optical switches. WDM systems have many other types of passive components, but we'll focus on the aforementioned passive components in this course. Multiplexing refers to the process of merging optical signals from transmitters with different wavelengths into one optical fiber for transmission. The components that achieve multiplexing are called multiplexers. Conversely, demultiplexers demultiplex signals from one optical fiber into receivers with different wavelengths. Commonly used multiplexers demultiplexers are classified into arrayed waveguiding grating, thin film filter, and comb filter or interleaver multiplexers demultiplexers. Let's first take a look at AWG multiplexers demultiplexers. AWG multiplexers and demultiplexers are composed of input waveguide gratings, output waveguide gratings, and slab or bend waveguide gratings in the free propagation area in between. Their function is to separate different wavelengths from one beam of light. Let's use a 40 channel AWG demultiplexer as an example. When a beam of white light enters the input waveguides, it's divided into 40 beams of light with mixed wavelengths, which then enter the bend waveguide gratings in the middle. Each channel of bend waveguide gratings has a different channel length, causing varied phase delays for different wavelengths. As a result, specific wavelengths have peak superimposed interference enhancement at corresponding output ports and peak trough interference canceling at other output ports. In this way, a certain output port only transmits specific wavelengths, implementing the demultiplexing of white light. AWG multiplexers, demultiplexers, have a large number of channels with small channel spacing, excellent passband flatness, and low insertion loss. AWG multiplexers and demultiplexers are highly suitable for ultra-high-speed large-capacity WDM systems and represent the developing trend of WDM multiplexing, demultiplexing components. The commonly used 40 and 48 channel multiplexers, demultiplexers, and WDM systems are AWG multiplexers, demultiplexers. Next are the TFF multiplexers, demultiplexers. Over 10 layers of thin films of different materials and with different refractive indexes are superimposed. The thickness of each film is a quarter of a wavelength, and the superimposition follows the pattern of one layer of high refractive index and one layer of low refractive index. Such a structure forms a passband for certain wavelengths and a block band for other wavelengths, achieving the desired band pass wavelength filtering. TFF multiplexers demultiplexers are not related to optical fiber specifications and can be made into miniaturized components with stable structures and excellent passband flatness. They are also unrelated to polarization, causing small insertion loss. TFF multiplexers, demultiplexers, can only be used in WDM systems with fewer than 16 channels. Systems with over 16 channels usually use AWG multiplexers, demultiplexers, instead of TFF ones, due to technical and cost advantages. The commonly used 2, 4, and 8 channel OADM components that add drop fixed wavelengths in WDM systems are of the TFF type. 16-channel OADM systems use filters of the AWG type instead of the TFF type. TFF multiplexers, demultiplexers with fixed wavelength adding and dropping have numerous board types. For example, 4-channel OADM boards are further classified into 1-4-channel to four channel boards, 5-8-channel to boards until 36-40-channel boards. The planning and O&M of wavelengths are challenging, as is the management of spare parts. These challenges evoke the birth of the Rotom, which will be discussed in future courses. The third type of multiplexers, demultiplexers, is the interleaver type. Interleavers are composed of passbands and blockbands with fixed frequency spacing, 
allowing signals within a specific frequency range to pass through. Interleavers are also referred to as comb filters due to their comb-like curves. In an 80-channel WDM system, interleavers transmit signals with 50 GHz channel spacing from even and odd bands separately, resulting in 100 GHz channel spacing, and then connect to a 40-channel demultiplexer. In general, interleavers are required for 40 to 80 channel, 48 to 96 channel, and 80 to 160 channel multiplexing. Let's now discuss optical splitters and couplers. Optical splitters and couplers are also passive components with opposite functions. They split or couple optical signals from different ports at a certain ratio. For example, a 1 to N optical splitter splits one signal beam into N beams of signals for transmission. A 1 by N coupler couples N beams of signals into one signal beam for transmission. Now to look at the working principles of optical splitters and couplers. Splitters can be classified into fused by conical, tapered, and planar light wave circuit splitters. FBT splitters intertwine two fiber cores and fuse them with oxyhydrogen flame. The split ratio between two optical ports is determined by the ratio of fusion. Splitters and couplers usually have two ports, which are cascaded to achieve multiple optical ports. PLC splitters couplers use PLC semiconductor branching chips. The optical power is evenly split at each branch. Multiple branches can be cascaded to implement multiple port splitting. Ports can be split into multiple branches, such as 16-channel and 32-channel splitting. Our commonly used client 1 plus 1 protection uses the 1 to 2 optical splitter. Optical signals are transmitted through a working channel and a protection channel and then received selectively at the receive end. Another commonly used splitter in WDM systems is the 1 to 9 optical splitter, which is composed of a 1 to 2 splitter and a 1 to 8 splitter. An optical signal beam on the main channel is first split by a 1 to 2 optical splitter. One of the two signal beams continues to be transmitted on the main channel, and the other signal beam is further split by a 1 to 8 optical splitter. Let's take a look at optical couplers now. The WDM system also has a 1 by 9 optical coupler which also consists of a 1 by 2 coupler and a 1 by 8 coupler. The signal beam from the main channel enters the 1 by 2 coupler with another signal beam which is coupled from the 1 by 8 coupler. Multiplexers, demultiplexers can be connected to OTUs or WDM line boards directly due to specific wavelengths at input and output ports. Optical couplers and splitters can't select specific wavelengths meaning they might have wavelength conflicts and be unable to connect to non-coherent 10G or 40G OTUs. Coherent 100G OTUs can select wavelengths themselves, therefore can connect to optical splitters. For example, 100G or 200G OTUs can connect directly to 1 to 9 or 1 to 20 splitters. And now for a quick recap. We've learned about active and passive components. Passive components include multiplexers, demultiplexers, which are further classified into AWG, TFF, and interleaver types. We've also learned about optical splitters and couplers, the differences between them and multiplexers, demultiplexers, and use precautions. That's all for this course. Thank you.